Welcome back to the start of the 2023 Jumbo Striped Bass Fishing Season. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, here in Maryland, uh, you can only catch and release uh, striped bass until uh, April 1st. So it's a very short season and I want to make the most of my opportunities. Um, not every day is a fishable day, unfortunately. Uh, weather, tides, they play a pretty significant role in uh, getting one of these girls in your lap. Uh, I'm also fishing big open water that uh, isn't all that friendly to kayaks. A 15 mile an hour wind with uh, two feet swells in below freezing air temps are not ideal for trying to lap a 50 pound fish. It's really more ideal for taking a 43 degree swim. Thanks. Uh, so it's winter and uh, the fish's metabolism doesn't support them feeding every day. Uh, they might feed once every four or five days. So you have to be willing to fish all day in freezing temps for a goose egg. Here's your prize, nothing. This short season has forced me to maximize my opportunities, like I said, and to that end, I keep comprehensive notes on my trips. Um, these notes help me better understand when and where to put myself uh, to stay on fish. I keep track of the weather conditions, what they were two days prior to the trip, as well as the day itself to give a more complete picture of what the fishing circumstances were. I keep track of uh, barometric pressure, temperature, both uh, water and air, uh, wind speed and direction, tide, wave height if it's available, precipitation, water clarity, um, and cloud cover. Um, I use this to help me understand what the fish are doing. You know, are they in sanctuary? Are they moving onto their feeding grounds? Are they moving out of the feeding grounds? Or are they on the feeding grounds? Uh, these parameters give indicators of where the fish could likely be. Um, you could just oversimplify this and categorize them in frontal, postfrontal, prefrontal, and normal conditions. Uh, frontal conditions, or let's call it nine ideal conditions, drive fish to seek stability. And what is the stability? It's stable water temperatures and high dissolved oxygen. Um, that is their sanctuary. And this is often found in deep water channels. Uh, Post-frontal and uh, prefrontal conditions have fish moving toward or away from their feeding grounds. And then normal, circum normal conditions place them you know, on top of the feeding grounds. In isolation, none of these parameters really give great information to predict uh, what the fish are doing. You know, cloud cover is a great example. You'll hear people say things like, it's cloudy today, I expected a better bite. And by people, I mean me, because that's exactly what I sound like and what I say to people. <laughs> Um, if it's cloudy and the fish are on the feeding grounds, yeah, you're in business. But if you're fishing their feeding grounds and they're in sanctuary, you know, you're just fishing, not catching. You know, who wants that? So I really recommend to anyone who wants to consistently catch fish to keep a detailed account of what happened on the water as well as the weather conditions to help you and assist you in patterning fish. Um, this season, as always, uh, I'm going to be trying new lures and equipment as well as exploring further that I have in recent years, hopefully. Um, I'm also planning for this uh, whole season to be just this one video, so uh, sorry if it's a long one. I hope it was good. I don't know. Uh, all right, well, let's get out in the water and get these fingers frostbitten and uh, covered in fish line, hopefully. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you on the water. Today's gonna to be a big tide movement day. I'm trying to put myself as fast as I can in the best position possible, the best location possible. It's a saltwater X-Rap 12. I have a Yozuri 3D crystal minnow on this side over here. We got some serious wave height today. That is not ideal if you're gonna be catching big fish. The winds right now, about nine miles an hour or so, and the water temperature, pretty cold. We're at 45 degrees right here. Air temperature is maybe just above freezing it's pretty cold out so it's one of those days you got to be out here you got to want it and uh, i do want it <laughs> obviously i wouldn't be here otherwise traveling about 2.8 2.9 miles an hour in these cold water conditions I haven't really marked any fish yet because i've been in super shallow water just trying to get in position but in the shallow waters i didn't see much the closer i get to deeper water the more line i'm going to let out for some of these so i can get them down a little bit deeper I really haven't been exploring deeper waters. Usually I gotta get this time of year 13, 14, 15 feet and maybe I'll start to see something whenever the water temperature starts warming up, the weather starts warming up, that's whenever I, I get a little bit shallower in water. I like to see the water temperature about, uh, for me personally, 47 degrees or so. Try to go with the tide right now. 
We've got an incoming tide. I'm trying to move with the tide. Yeah, I hate hearing the sound of whitecaps. Whenever I hear the sound of whitecaps, I'm like, no, not whitecaps, please. It just means that the, the wave height is a little bit uh, higher than I want it to be. Makes it tough to fight a fish. You got big waves and you're catching, fighting a big fish. Whenever you get hit in the side with those big waves and you got a big fish fighting you, give me a recipe for getting in the water. And uh, yeah, I don't want to take a 45 degree bath. You come out here this time of year, you have some expectations, but uh, tell you what, some days on these cold water conditions, the fish aren't eating. They don't eat every single day. You're in wintertime condition, their metabolism is way slower. They might eat once every eight days or so, whereas in warm water conditions, they might eat every other day. The wind and the waves are supposed to uh, get uh, less and less as the date goes on, but that don't help you <laughs> whenever you're in it in the moment. Oh, I just saw a pot of fish running my hole right over here. That was 16 feet. Ooh, bunch of fish right over here. Bunch of fish, 15 feet, bunch of fish. Well, now you all, all you have to find is what they're gonna willing to smack. Oh, there's fish. There's fish, that's a small one. They jumped off there. The fish are down deep today. Fish over here. Is that fish? It looks like, all right, fish, that's on the bottom of the winch here. Let's see. See what we got. That's six inch bomb of wind cheater. Getting us a small little fish. All right, little guy. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Got a lot of fish coming right underneath them here. I wish I was more efficient at unhooking fish. These are not, let's catch a big fish wave. The only good thing is that they are spaced far enough apart that I'm not getting water in my face every 10 seconds. I am super thankful for that. Because if that were the case, I'd be have to get off the water. I'm not doing a lot of lure change out right now. I don't want to. Whenever it's uh, wavy like this and windy like this, I look down for 10 seconds and I'm 360 and the waves hit me. I basically just try to stick with a couple lures and just hopefully they'll do the trick. Right now it's a Rapala Saltwater x rab and the uh, Bomber Wind Cheater, six inch. The only fish I've been marking have been about 16 feet deep. I definitely marked some bait fish and they were 16 feet deep. That's why you would expect the striped bass were close by. But it looks like it's just small striped bass. Oh, that wind is kicking up now. Don't do that to me, man. Don't do that to me, bro. Well, they're not really all that interested in the, the uh, saltwater x wrap today. And that's how it goes, man. Sometimes they are not interested in super exaggerated lure. They want something that's more subtle. Wind has lessened. I don't know. The waves, uh, right now, they're a little bit lessened. And they taught me a lesson. Is that a fish? Is that a fish? It almost feels like a fish. I caught up one. Oh, I do got a fish. Small fish, all right. What in the, what happened to this fish? Look at that fish, man. This fish has had some serious problems. Like, I don't understand that. Have you ever seen a striped bass that look like that? <laughs> Good luck, bro. I don't know how big this fish is. I don't think it's super big, but maybe it's uh, 24, 25 inches or something. Yeah, not too big, but uh, 
Not the smallest fish I ever got either. There we go. There's a fat one. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> fat one, fat one, fat one. All right. <laughs> Let's get you back in. Man, I had you out too long. Sorry, guy. All right. That'll break up the monotony a little bit. One fish like that is enough to re-energize you. If you've been having a crappy day, it's enough to throw a little energy in you and make you want to stay out a little bit longer. And that one had a bunch of sea lice on it, so I'm thinking that was uh, an ocean runner. I met a boat driver that did not get within 100 feet of me, man. Thank you. There is a lot of boat traffic today. So there's been a lot of boat traffic that's been pretty close to me. And it is weekend, so you got to kind of expect that if you're going to be out here. And I don't know what it is about boats and kayaks. As soon as a boat sees a kayak, they immediately want to get within as close as they possibly can to it and almost nearly run you over. I had a uh, sailboat this morning. Dang, I mean, set its course directly for me. It was going straight and was got closer to me. The closer it got, the more it corrected to point directly at me. Hi, you're really close to me. You did all that just to tell me it was cold outside? Yeah, no shit. All right, let's put these wet gloves back on. Because we don't like having wet gloves on. I'm trying to get me a nice sea cow. A nice big fat one, but uh, so far my efforts have been thwarted. This morning I've been thwarted by giant waves and a lot of wind and uh, some cold, man. I'm telling you what, uh, when your morale gets hit with uh, cold fingers and cold toes and cold face and cold neck, your motivation to keep fishing drops. And uh, well, I stuck it out and uh, today, biggest fish I've gotten so far was, uh, I don't know, 28 inches, something like that. Nothing right home about, that's not the, the fish I'm after, but hopefully I can catch one of them. I've been changing my lure selection quite a bit out here today. Uh, I've been running uh, in channels up to 18 feet. I've been running in really shallow water, five feet deep. So I've been changing my lures around and uh, going from uh, Yozuri type lures to Rapala to Bomber. Those are the ones I've been sticking with the most. I've been using uh, Yozuri 3D crystal minnows, Yozuri mag minnows for shallow water fishing, uh, as well as the small 3D crystal minnow for shallow water fishing. I've also been using the Bomber wind cheater. I've been using the six inch and the four and a half inch version. Um, the six inch version, that thing will get down to, really easy, that thing will get down to 16 feet. Uh, I've caught a couple fish with that one today. And I've also been using the Rapala Saltwater X-Wrap 12. That one can get me down to about 11, 12 feet. So I think I caught like one or two today on that. Uh, and only caught one on a uh, Yozuri 3D Crystal Meno. So not really a hot bite today. We got calm conditions right now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> It belies what was happening on earlier today, but uh, still pretty cold out here, and uh, I want to make it worth it. If you're going to freeze all day, man, give me a big fish. Give me one. Come on, Mal. <laughs> all right. All right, we're in a little bit deeper of water. Let me go ahead and throw out the mag minnow. There's the old mag minnow. Look at that. I think I smacked a jellyfish with this guy. You can see what I'm talking about. I got jellyfish guts on me. And it's this brown jellyfish, whatever type of jellyfish this is. Brown guts jellyfish. I don't appreciate your brown slime jellyfish. Sea lice all over the place. Holy cow, man. How much sea lice do I got in here? Isopods. Sea lice, whatever you want to call them. There's fish. There's fish. About 14 feet of water here. And that is definitely not a big fish. If it's still one. Lost him. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> didn't lose him. I found him. I found him to be wanting. Wanting of size, guy. And that's how you get it done for the cows, son. 
He hasn't been eating anything that's been delicious, that's for sure. Well, the saltwater extra I've got to hit right away. And we're coming on some fish. They're going to be on this side over here. Looks like. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. All right, there we are. First fish. <laughs> Got a lot of fish down here. Something hit it. What in the heck did I do here today? Oh, no, 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 no. Fish. But that is not how you want to catch a fish. <laughs> oh, pulled that one out of his mouth. Well, nothing else. I'm glad I didn't come out here and get skunked. Oh, there's fish. These are the guys that want to hook you. Every time they want to hook you. All right, get out of here. Get, now, get. Over top of 15 feet of water now. I'm gonna move myself back into what I found earlier was like 12 feet. Fish, fish. There's a fish. Water X wrap. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's a better fish. <laughs> Wasn't fighting too hard there for a millisecond. He's weird hooked a little bit, but I mean, he's a 24 incher or so. Bigger, maybe. There we go. Look at that fat one. <laughs> All right, guy. Let's get you back down. All right, we got a bunch of fish coming through right here. A bunch of fish, 10 feet, whatever. Like a billion fish. Oh my God. Look at those fish. I'd like to be able to find a bigger pot of fish. Fish that are not 10 inches long. That might not be in the cards today. Oh, there's fish. All right, got off, that's fine. Oh, I guess it didn't get off. Just incredibly uh, little. Just a little old shite. Son. Boom. That's your cow right there. Cow. Whoa. Man, we got some fish up, Josh. I don't know what I'm saying. Ooh, fish. There we go. There we go. Heaniest. A bit better. That's a small one. All right, well, I'm fine to catch a Yuzuri fish. Even if you are a little old shite. We got us a usury fish. We're gonna start off with the Saltwater X-Wrap 12 and a usury 3D Crystal Minnow. Water temperature 45, almost 46 degrees. Cast out. All right, 3D Crystal Minnow this side. Propala Saltwater X-Wrap on this side. Speed at about 2.8 miles an hour. Well, there's some fish over here, almost 13 feet down. Oh, there's fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Is that a big one? Is that a big one? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, son. Whoa, oh. Nah, that ain't a big one. Can't be no big one. Oh yeah, son. No, <laughs> that is a small fish. Small fish that is weird hooked, man. Small weird hook.
There we go. Ugh. Fat sucker. <laughs> That's a fish. Not a big fish, but a fish. But it was a snag at first. This thing can't be that big. Can it? I don't know. <laughs> All right, it's bigger than I thought it was. Definitely bigger than I thought it was. The head shakes don't feel like it could be a big fish, but I see it. Yeah, this is a decent sized fish. It's not a huge fish, but uh, yeah, that's, that's 30 all day long. Of course, that's the Yozuri. Knowing <laughs> what the Yozuri does, just catch fish. Oh man. Come on, coordination. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> oh, fat one. This precise lure is the lure that I've probably caught most big fish on. Glad I didn't lose it. Ow, ow, man, that got clamped down on my finger. <laughs> All right, man, appreciate you, guy. Oh, big fish. I lost this guy. Oh, no, I didn't. And a little old shite. All right. All right, there's all the fish. Well, there's some of the fish, small fish. There's fish. Whoop, there's a fish. Son? Whoop, there's a fish. Don't you think about it, son. Fish. Bring you up here. Squiggly. He's squiggly. You go ahead and go on now. Get! All right, I guess I'm gonna start out with the Yozuri 3D Crystal Minnow. It's five and a quarter inch. Going out over here on the right side. We'll put the saltwater X wrap. This is the 12. This one's like four and three quarter inches or something. We're on the left side over here. All right, the water temperature right now says 42 degrees. I don't know if I believe that yet. I don't know if my sensor is up to temperature yet. That's pretty cold. So starting this trip out at 2.8, 2.9 miles an hour. Over 12 feet of water, about 13 feet of water right now. Had some serious winds. We're in very blown out conditions. Normally it's a couple more feet deep here. Right now I'm just doing a little bit of exploration. I want to see if I can find any fish. When I start these trips out, I'm really just trying to, I'd love to find big fish right away, but that doesn't always happen. So right now, if I can locate some uh, schools of uh, small striped bass, kind of see where what depths they're hanging out at and uh, maybe figure out what they're eating, that could be an indicator of what the, the bigger fish might be doing. So that's really what I'm doing right now, starting the trip out, just trying to see what's what. It is so wonderful. Not having giant waves smack me in the face. Not having wind overpowering me. Got no fish, but maybe I can stay warm for a little while. I mean, that's the king of subtle right there. This is the long cast version of the X-Wrap, 14 size. Wow, they're right. This thing is basically no action at all. I mean, it's like a listless action. Yep, they're right. That thing has suck action. I'm glad I saw that. As of right now, I don't have any use for these. I'm sure I'll put these in the don't use category area. I have not really marked a fish yet. That does not really bode well. That's like saying I need to be on the water here for 12 hours to see a fish. That sucks. Uh, so far today, I've got pretty good conditions, at least for me. Uh, I'm not miserable. It's sunny. I don't have a lot of wind. I don't have big waves in my face every five seconds. I don't know how good it's going to be for the striped bass. The one thing I do know is that this water is filled with some kind of jellyfish. I have no idea what kind of jellyfish that is. Uh, they, are, they have like a red center body to them. I've never seen them before. 
but uh, I'm catching them like crazy. At any rate, I've been out here exploring a little bit, just trying to see what depth the fish are at, just trying to find them somewhere. Uh, so far, I've been in shallow water five feet. I've been as deep as 25 feet. Really haven't seen much life. We've had a few days of really, really windy weather, man. It's been 50, 60 mile an hour wind. Uh, and I don't know what that's doing to the fish today, but so far I've seen nothing. We're not in the best tide movement right now, so that could be something to do with it, but uh, I'd expect to see something. Uh, at any rate, I'm out here trying to catch fish and uh, moving in and out of the shallows. I mean, really what you gotta do is you gotta figure out what your controls are for your lure. You're trying to get your lure in front of the fish. And the only way you can do that is figure out lures that uh, will get to the depth you want to. So when you're talking about lure selection, you're talking about the five things that you control. You control size, speed, depth, action, and color. The size this time of year, we're talking about late winter fishing, um, it's not really as significant. I've caught fish on one side, three inch lure, on the other side I've had a nine inch lure and I've caught fish just as well on each side and uh, caught the same size of fish, unfortunately. Uh, speed, really that's dependent on the water temperature. When the water temperature hits about uh, 44 or lower, I usually try to stay at 2.8 miles an hour or less. That's my best luck. And then as it, uh, the temperature starts to creep up, I get closer to three miles an hour. It seems like a subtle difference, but I definitely have noticed a difference whenever fish hitting it, the lure I'm traveling at three miles an hour and the water's too cold, they miss it a lot more often. Uh, action, and that's a <laughs> an underlooked, at least it was for me for a long time. I basically thought actions of lures like, yeah, they're all about the same. Well, there's, could be further from the truth. Uh, there are some lures that are exaggerated in every plane, wobble, wiggle. Uh, some that are somewhere in between, they'll have an exaggerated wobble, but a very subtle wiggle. And some of them have a subtle wobble and wiggle. Uh, really, I have lures throughout the day. I'll try different actions to see which one produces because there will be days, and I've had them, where one action makes all the difference. I was out last year with a friend and I had an exaggerated action lure, he did not. He caught no fish whatsoever. Even though we were the same size, color, everything else, he was unable to catch fish. I caught fish all day, nonstop. Uh, the depth, uh, really that's something I'll touch on a little bit later here, but that's what I was talking about earlier, just moving in and out of uh, the shallows and the deep water uh, to kind of see where the fish are located. And you want to get a lure that's going to get in front of those fish. And uh, really there's some important criteria to know whenever you're trying to get a lure, a build lure, to the appropriate depth. Uh, last thing, color. This time of year, sometimes color is really important. By really important, I mean, I'll either catch a lot more fish with a particular color, even if I have the same lures on, there'll be a color that catches more fish for me for whatever reason. Uh, but I found if I use natural colors, silver and blue, silver and black, those are somewhere in between and usually my best overall bet, which is why I end up using them more often. Uh, getting back to depth, you look at the manufacturer specification for lures, they're always gonna give you a depth. Even sometimes they'll give you a trolling depth, but what they don't give you is the really important information. They don't give you uh, how fast they were moving the lure. Uh, they don't give you the line diameter that they were using, which tells you how much drag is on the line, as well as how much line did they let out. All of these things are important factors to determine how deep you're getting your lure, which is why whenever I'm talking about my lures, I tell you, uh, I have 12 pound test, I let out 100, 150 uh, feet of line. It basically gives you all the criteria as well as how fast I'm moving to tell you how I know I got that deep. And really what I've, I do is I travel in and out of shallow waters and wait at a particular speed, uh, line length let out, uh, and a line diameter. Uh, I figure out when my lure starts hitting the bottom. And once it does, I know, hey, I have 150 feet out and I'm hitting the bottom. So, you know, that's if I want to create that situation again, that's what I need to do. And you might say, well, how do I know I have 150 feet out? Well, the, the, the uh, reels that I use have 39 inches of retrieve. So I know if I get 32 reels in, I'm roughly at 100 feet. And if I'm at like 42, 43, I'm at 140 feet. So uh, it gives me a pretty good indicator, plus or minus eight feet of where I'm at. And so I have a standard cast. And then after that, if I'm traveling at three miles an hour, letting line out, I can count to four. And I know I'll let out 20 feet of line if I'm traveling three miles an hour. Um, so those are all things that I use so I can actually be very consistent about how much line I'm letting out and very consistent about the presentation of a particular lure. Uh, and I think if you employ some of those techniques, I think it'll help your game out as well. Uh, at any rate, out here fishing. Hopefully I'm going to get on a big fish some point today. Any fish, period. Honestly, I'd, I'd like to catch me a fish, period. Uh, and when I do, I'm going to get back to you. <laughs>
I'm getting close to being in position, I guess. It's uh, water temperature is uh, 46 degrees, 45.6 degrees. I'm over 6.6 .6 feet of water. I have a Yuzuri uh, long cast uh, hydro minnow on this side, and I have a uh, red fin on that side. That's the five inch version of the red fin. Uh, that's about the only thing I've got, or some of the things I got that uh, stay super, super shallow. Seven, eight feet now. Ooh, that's not a fish. Is that a fish? That ain't, uh, is that a fish? That can't be no fish. Is that a fish? What? I got two fish on. What? No, man. I got two fish on. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I got two fish on. This, this is not bueno. Yeah, I got two fish on. What the what, man? Let me see. Hopefully I lost this fish. I didn't. All right, that fish jumped off. All right, one fish jumped off. This felt like the good fish. Pretty sure I lost this guy too. Yep, lost that guy too. Well, anyway, this is a continuation of the last trip I was out. The last time I was out, the, the wind conditions picked up, the waves picked up, and I was not marking any life at all. So uh, I stayed on the water five hours. I proved everything I needed to prove by staying on the water as long as I did. And uh, I'm at, back at it today and hopefully tomorrow morning and see if I can catch some fish. But uh, last time, that was a total skunk. Uh, that's what happens in the wintertime fishing. You get feast or famine, happens often. I'm hoping that today is not famine and if I get two hits almost right away, I'm assuming that uh, I'm gonna do a little bit better than I did last time, hopefully. I'm just hoping that I don't get a lot of double ups. I don't want double ups with big fish. Uh, that's kind of, I don't know if that's what happened exactly, but uh, probably was. All it is is just big giant tangles and they'll tangle my motor. They'll, I mean, it just, it'll, I end up spending an hour after catching a, a couple fish, whether they're bigger. If it was a big fish, that'd be one thing, but I couldn't be guaranteed. The fish that I had on the uh, hydro minnow felt like a pretty decent sized fish. I can't say that it was a monster, but it may have been 30 couple inches. Over top of 16 feet of water right now. Got the Rapala Saltwater XR14 on this side, Missouri Magnum on the, my left side. Well, uh, water temperature's sticking to 47 degrees, so I don't know. Is that fish? Yep, we got a fish. We got a fish. It feels like a good one. I'm gonna keep going. I gotta reel this other line in. No, don't you dare get off. Did he get off? Yeah, he did. These fish are very, very good at getting off. That being the case, I need to be Johnny on the spot with setting a hook. I cannot believe I missed another one. Well, that's how it goes. On to the next one. Hopefully there is a next one. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Got you that time. Got you this time, Jack. I got you this time. Finally not letting one go. Oh yeah, son. I want to touch this leader just so I can say I touched it. Oh man. I got let off. Loosen this drag a little bit. This is a nice one, man. I don't know if it's 40 inches, but if it isn't, it's pretty close. He's trying to get off. I can tell you that right now. He's doing a pretty good job. Oh man, he's just digging. Digging and digging and digging. Whew. Look at that guy, man. Oh. Showing the power. There we go, son. He won't let me. Look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, there's a big sucker right there. I don't really know. I don't want to measure this guy because I want to keep him out of the water too long, but man, that's a fat sucker. It's heavy too. Let's get you back in, guy. It's just ready to go. Oh, just ready to go, like immediately. There's fish. There's fish. 
There's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, man. That's a big one. It's a nice one. Oh, he's gonna go, he's gonna go, he's gonna go. He's gonna go. Oh, I almost lost this guy. Almost no picture for either of you. There we go. There we go. Let me sit Oh, crap. No! Nope. <laughs> no picture for that guy. I got caught up on my seat somehow. But that one was only probably a 30 couple inch fish. That wasn't a 40 inch fish, but still a good time. That's pretty nice getting uh, some consecutive hits. Coming up with some kind of strategy to get these fish landed. What a world of difference it makes not having any boats. Holy cow. Oh, there's fish, there's fish, there's fish, there's fish. There's fish. Uh, there's fish, there's a fish. Get that hook in there. I got the drag locked out a little bit more than I normally do. 25 pound breed over here. I'm trying to keep them up. If I can. If I can. There we go. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> There's another nice one. All right, guy. He was a fighter. He was a fighter. Oh, there's fish. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. Did he get off? Did he get off? Did he get off? I think he did. He got off. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. There's fish. Fish. Oh, that guy is a big blue goober. That's a word. He's trying to spit that hook, my friends. Man, he's trying to spit it for all he can. I gotta keep the tension on this guy. No! Ah, oh, man. <laughs> that was a big son of a gun. Whew. Could not keep the tension on. Well, he did a good job getting off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feels like a good one. Where is he? Whoa, whoa, smack the kayak like a freaking great white shark over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big fatty. Big fatty. Aha! Uh -huh. Over here. Oh, you're nice and... Uh. Yeah, son. Yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna let you go, man. I'm out for the big striped bass today. That's the, that's the goal, that's what I'm after. Hopefully I can do it, I don't know. Uh, conditions are pretty decent today, at least for me as a human being. The wind isn't crazy, the waves aren't crazy. Um, it's cold out, it usually is uh, this time of year. Uh, talking about late winter time, fishing for large striped bass. But uh, if you can suck it up and uh, get through it, sometimes you can catch some big fish. Uh, I've had a lot of skunks this uh, big striped bass season so far. And the season, if you wanna call it that, 
is uh, four weeks long for me, basically from uh, March to April. In April, in Maryland, you can't target striped bass anymore. Uh, illegal. So you only get four weeks, and in these four weeks, I haven't had a lot of chances to go out. The chances that I have, I've missed a lot. Man, I've missed some big fish. And I'm doing the dual reel in, and this year the dual reel in, man, it has not served me well. I mean, I do it anyway because I don't want to get snagged up on the, the lines and lose the fish that way. Um, but I've lost uh, probably eight or nine big fish just because I've been doing the dual, dual reel in. Um, I'm still going to keep doing it, but man, it's it's frustrating. At any rate, I'm out here trolling. I'm uh, trolling over about uh, from, I'm going to be trolling over from about five feet to about 12 to 15 feet uh, in and out of shallows and on flats. And what I'm doing now, today, that I don't normally do, is I'm using 25 pound braid. I usually use 12 pound braid, but uh, because I want to get these fish in a little bit faster, I've had some issues with them getting off <laughs> recently. Not that they're breaking my line or anything like that, but uh, they're actually just shaking the hook through the process and just reeling it in, man. This year, man, they're, they were expert escape artists. So uh, I'm gonna try to get them in a little bit faster and 25 pound braid lets me horse them in just a little bit faster, depending on the hooks I have. Um, so the, the lures that I'm gonna be using today, I'm gonna be using whatever lure gets me to the right depth. But right now what I got on here is I got a Yozuri 3D crystal minnow, five and a quarter inch on this side. I'm probably getting about six, seven feet because I'm using 25 pound braid. And on this side, I got a Yozuri mag minnow. Uh, and that one's probably getting me about the same distance down. And again, because I'm using 25 pound braid. Uh, if I'm using 12 pound braid, I can get them down uh, probably about three feet further in the water column. And I do have a rod that has 12 pound test on it. So if I need to get in a little bit deeper with some of these lures, I'll do it. Uh, I'm not trying to be all the way on the bottom of the big fish. They'll come up for it. Uh, what I found, at least this year and years past, if you're talking about the big fish, they're willing to travel through the water column just a little bit more to get that fish. Where smaller fish, I mean, you got to be within two feet of them. Big fish, you can be within four feet of them and they'll, they'll hammer it. Uh, at any rate, uh, hopefully I'm going to get on some fish today, and uh, when I do, I'm going to get back to you. 18 feet all of a sudden. Is fish? Oh, yeah. Fish. Fish. Mag minnow. <laughs> All right, start the morning off right with a fish. It's gonna be on the left side whether I like it or not. Maybe a 30 couple inch fish, maybe. Let's see what we got here. Oh no, that's a bigger one. That's a bigger one. Is there a mag minnow five inch? Gets down to about six feet or so. Yeah, this is a nice fish. Crap. This is a nice fish. Nice. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Step three. What up here? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, man, that's a big one. All right, let's get this guy back in. <laughs> Take one more look at him. <laughs> oh man, that's a heavy fish. <laughs> All right. Revive you, girl. I don't know how much reviving you need. Straight down. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. And that's what he ate. It was very magmento. It was a heck of a ride. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, fish. Fish. Like all of a sudden, I just picked up on it. Fish. There it is back there. 
Ah, uh, it's not a bigger, it's not a giant one. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Bro, didn't mean to do you like that. We got hooks down here. I don't want to get you in them. Come on, man. I don't want to get you in them. Uh. <laughs> little guy with some spunkful. Not that little, but uh, I don't know what that is. 25 inch, 26, 27, I don't know. <laughs> nice one, thank you, bud. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Uh, I can't say it's been a super productive day, but any day I come out and I catch a large striped bass, 40 inches or better, that's a really good day. Uh, in fact, I think I'm wrapping the season up right here. For Maryland, the uh, striped bass season closes uh, on April 1st, or April 1st, you can't fish anymore. And uh, we're getting really close to that deadline right now, so uh, <laughs> wrapping up the season right here. Uh, I can't say it's been a great season, but it has not been a bad season either. Uh, I haven't been able to get out as much as I wanted to, but uh, I've landed uh, something like this season. I've only landed uh, seven fish, but I haven't had that many trips. Um, and anytime you catch a large striped bass, I'm o I always feel privileged to uh, to get it one in my lap. <laughs> Thank you for getting in my lap, girl. <laughs> that was really kind of you. Uh, at any rate, uh, I hope you enjoyed the videos uh, or the video. I don't know what I'm going to do here, a montage or uh, individual videos, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I enjoyed it. So at any rate, uh, thanks guys for uh, coming along with me. And I guess uh, until next time, I'll see you on the water.